I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Drew. Drew. House Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit. V. Convertible bird in Miami. Yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Yo. Strip club made a tsunami. Black. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Wish. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Oh. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Yeah. Sal Magluta with the boat game. <laughs> Falcone with the cocaine. Oh. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Oh. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Oh. Larry Davis from Close oh. Range. I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Drew. Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit, v. convertible bird in Miami, Yo. graduated summa cum laude, strip club made a tsunami, Carlton Hines with the ball game, Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes, Craig Pettis in the M Town, Sal Magluta with the boat game, Falcone with the cocaine, like Freeway Ricky with the plug game, like Monster Cody in South Central, Larry Davis from Close Range. Yo, Big Bo, check what we just did, bro. John Gotti's selling up his... Did you ever wake up after a wild night out and check your credit card statement and wonder exactly what did I do last night? <laughs> well, uh, Jay-Z might finally have that 100th problem. That's probably how he was feeling after a rather expensive Sunday on the town. Carlos, how much did our Jay-Z spend in one night out? $110,000. Sounds like my kind of night, Lowe's. Exactly. So Jay-Z, he was celebrating his friend Juan O.G. Perez's birthday. Now, Juan O.G. Perez, he's also the uh, president of Rock Nation Sports. Mm -hmm. Let me walk you guys through their night. They started the night out at Zuma in Midtown, which is right around the corner from here, and they spent $13,000 on dinner. Okay. Then they went uptown to Made in Mexico in Inwood for drinks, where they spent $9,000 drinking Jay-Z's Douce Cognac. Yes, if I do then, say so myself. Exactly. <laughs> and then they uh, went up the block to the playroom, where they spent $91,000 on 40 bottles of Ace of Spades champagne, which Jay-Z also owns. So that's about $2,300 uh, a bottle. And then they left a generous tip of $11,000 that the server posted on Snapchat. So I, I thought at the minute he entered the business that Jay-Z would be a formidable presence in the Asian industry. He is a draw, and I've heard from the Asian community that they're worried. Certainly from our competitor standpoint, they've got to be concerned. Jay-Z and Rock Nation bring a lot to the party. He's got reach to places that probably are different than, than what typically CAA is involved in. It comes down to two things. The ability to recruit players and the ability to deliver the contract. As a recruiter, I give him an A+. He's done a pretty superb job of picking players that can trigger multiple revenue streams. They are good for contract negotiations, they are good for endorsements, they are good for crossover entertainment projects. He's got the starting quarterback of a New York football team. Durant is there for marketing. CC, he's got a starting pitcher for the New York Yankees. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. In terms of negotiating, I don't think he 
negotiates the contracts with guys who are well established and experienced in the business backing him up, there's no limit as to what he can do. I am confident that there are more players recruiting Jay-Z than vice versa. ...to form a company where we can help top athletes in various sports the same way we have been helping artists. 91000 for a wine bill. To keep it real with you, that was Juan's bill. What up, though? Shades pop a lot. We back on my business. We back in the city with it. Y'all meet us uptown in Harlem, 142nd and Broadway. We trying to make a play. Hurry up. Now, I'm not really quite sure how this works, but today I feel like we're covering one of the more well-known while also covering one of the most mysterious people that the streets have ever encountered. And it's few and far between on this channel that we get to really cover a story that ends with a happy ending. But if you know anything about the ins and outs of this situation, you will most likely say that this is one of those stories. And the person that I'm going to be covering today is going to be somebody that's been immortalized in multiple Jay-Z songs. He's been referenced by Cameron. I remember hearing Jim Jones reference him. And that person is going to be the infamous Juan OG Juan Perez. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's just me, but when I hear that name itself, I automatically think the game and the first thing that comes to my mind. And to be honest, I'm not even sure where it comes from, but this is for my Oyes on Broadway serving Roy Ye all day. Now, with it being past the statute of limitations on the alleged drug crimes that Jay-Z and a lot of the people in his close circle allegedly had committed, he goes on in his more recent music to speak on it. And a lot of people in his close circles, specifically Young Guru, could be seen on Instagram pretty much decoding a lot of the lyrics that were almost mysteries to some people. And while decoding these lyrics, he speaks on a reference that Jay-Z makes to Lauro and La Madrina. And in the process of decoding it, he went on to explain that La Madrina was a street reference to Rock Nation CEO Desiree Perez, who a lot of us know to have cooperated with the federal government in 1994 against a group of alleged violent drug traffickers from Puerto Rico and Colombia. Now it was said for her cooperation in that case, she would receive five years of probation. But I also seen a few years later, right around 1997, where she would be involved in some kind of grand larceny and firearm case and that is going to be the case that led to her being pardoned and having her sentence commuted by president trump around the same time where he commuted the sentences of guys like kodak black Lil wayne and even lou hobbs now it's a lot to be said and a lot of references about her on the internet with funk master flex even going on hot 97 at one point in time saying how she doesn't count as far as being a snitch because she is a civilian or she was a civilian. Now, however you look at that situation is really on you because it's hard for me to say that she's a civilian if she's recording these drug deals. But some people could also say that she is a civilian because she's not in the process of selling the narcotics. They changed the whole shit about who's snitching and how snitching and what is snitching so much that that shit is really, really confusing in this day and age. So I'm not going to get into that too much. But what I will speak about is Jay-Z's references to Lauro, who Young Guru would go on to say was a reference directly to his business partner and the head of Rock Nation Sports, Juan Perez. Now, OG Juan, who I referenced almost as a ghost early on for obvious reasons, should be about 55 years old today with the allegations of his past profession, he doesn't do too many interviews, but he did speak with the New York Post about 10 years ago in 2014, when the group first decided to start up Rock Nation Sports. At the time, he was 46 years old, and he explained how he was raised in Harlem, and he grew up rooting for the Yankees heavily, even saying that his favorite player was Willie Randolph. And like I said, not much is mentioned about his early on life, 
but he did go on to tell a newspaper that he did attend Brandius High School on the Upper West Side, saying that after high school, he was doing the airport thing. Now, he would decline going into detail as far as his profession at the airport, pretty much telling the reporter, I didn't want to talk about that. And he was said to link up with Jay-Z at the very beginning stages of his career in around 1996 or 1997. So that's a little bit after the whole situation with Desiree Perez and the DEA saying that the relationship had been formed through one of the partners of Rockefeller, Kareem Biggs Burt. Early on in the relationship, he would explain that he would go on to help Jay-Z run studios and he also aided him in opening the first 4040 club that was located in Lower Manhattan, as well as once being the head of Jay-Z's one-time Latin record label, Rock La Familia, a label that would go on to sign fellow Harlem Knight, True Life. And if I'm being 100% honest with y'all, it was during the course of this episode that I realized that guys like Jay-Z and LeBron James really reached the epitome of everything that they did. Now, it's obvious because we turn on the TV and we see those guys, but when you kind of look at the trail and the history, so LeBron James took one of his best friends from high school that had no previous experience being an agent whatsoever. Me speaking of Rich Paul, and now he's one of the top agents. So pretty much he took his stature and brought his homeboy with him. And Jay-Z did that same exact thing with guys like Emery and specifically OG Wan, with OG Wan being the head of Rock Nation, a company that Forbes would go on to list as the number seven ranked sports agencies in the year of 2022, saying that they had 190 clients and their industries of focus is gonna be football, basketball, baseball, soccer, rugby, and cricket. And some of their most known athletes being guys like Kyla Murray, LaMelo Ball, and Saquon Barkley. So I know a lot of guys wanted me to get on here and talk about how he had this 150 brick shipment here and he moved it from here to there. I think we all know about that shit. Just look at the outcome now in 2023, a nigga that was supposedly moving bricks in 1994 is now the head of the number seven sports agency in the world. That shit just crazy to me. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe and the bell right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all head downstairs to the comment box. Run it up. Let me know the first time y'all ever heard of OG Wan. Have y'all ever heard of OG Wan? Is this the biggest transition from street nigga to legitimacy that we ever seen? I guess not including the Kennedys, but I'm leaning towards this. Y'all definitely make sure y'all let me know what cities we need to head to, what stories I need to tell, what I missed, what I got wrong, what gangsters I need to cover. Tap in with your boy directly on Twitter, Instagram, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until next time, y'all know the verdict. Shades popular. Salute the almighty mob.